number 72. A bicycle has wheels 28 inches in diameter. A tachometer determines that the wheels are rotating at 180 revolutions per minute. Find the speed, in other words, the linear speed, the bicycle is traveling down the road. All right, so let's just show the tire real quick. So this is the tire, okay? And the tire has a particular diameter. So they told that to us, right? It said that it was 28 inches. So there's going to be a 28 inch diameter wheel. Okay. And now what's happening is that this particular tire, right? This particular tire that we see is rotating now. Assume that it's, you know, if we had a bicycle, it would have two wheels, right? It's going down the road. Um, and it's rotating at 180 revolutions every minute. So that means as one minute passes, right? Let's say you have a particular point here. Every minute, this point on the wheel is going to go around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, we'll stop. 180 RPM. Okay, so 180 times it's going to go around every single minute. So let me ask this question: How do we find then the linear speed of the bike? We well, have to keep in mind that every time this wheel moves forward, right? If you think about it, it's like as the wheel moves forward, this point kind of moves backward right? And then this point starts coming down, etc. Okay. So what we can do is we can consider that whatever the linear speed of this bicycle is, would be equal to the circumference that it's traveling, divided by the time over which that it takes to travel that circumference. Okay. So let's just write that formula down that speed is simply going to always be equal to linear distance over the time it takes to cover that particular linear distance. And in this problem, we're dealing with circumferential motion. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but it sounds really smart. So I'm going to write up here, the distance that it's traveling is going to be the circumference. Okay, I got to find something about the circumference divided by the time it takes to cover the circumference. Okay. Now, when I find the circumference of this particular circle over here, I'm really finding the distance it travels in one revolution, right? That's really what I'm calculating. So when I find the circumference, remember the circumference is equal to two pi r or pi times d, where the r and the d both equal the radius and the diameter respectively. All I need to do to find the circumference here of this particular tire is gonna to be to plug in the diameter of 28 inches, okay? So you can leave it in terms of pi, you can leave it 28 pi, or you can take out the calculator and do 28 times then pi. Okay, second pi. And this works out to be about 87 point, what happened to the eight? 87, sorry, point, you know, nine, six inches, or about 87, uh, or about 88 inches. That means every time this bike tire makes one rotation, okay, the point on this tire is moving 88 inches about. Not only is this bike tire moving 88 inches, but then you're moving linearly 88 inches every single time the bike mates one revolution. Okay. So this is basically the circumference or this is the distance per revolution. But how many revolutions are you making in a particular minute? You're making 180 of them. Yes. So if every single revolution is about 88 inches, then what I can do is I can take that number about 88 and multiply it by then 180. And what would that tell me if I were to do that? That would now tell me the entire amount of inches, right? 15,833, you know, 0.6 roughly. Okay. Inches. Now what did I did in the calculator? took the answer I had before the exact value and I just multiplied it by 180. Okay. So this would tell me the exact number. Um, this is rounded here, but I mean in the calculator, it's exact. Okay. It would tell me the uh, exact number uh, of inches I'm traveling every single minute. Right? This is it. This is the amount of inches traveled in a minute. Cool. Does that make sense? So what you want to do now is that's actually, <laughs> that's basically your speed. Okay. That's your speed now. Right? The what basically what I did, I actually calculated in a different way. I didn't even use the formula, but speed here, what I would have done, this is it. This is, it, this is how many inches you're covering in a minute. 
Now they, they didn't, by the way, they didn't tell me how they wanted the speed. Did they want it per minute? Inches per minute? Did they want it miles an hour? I, I have no clue, right? So you're free to choose whatever unit you want, all right? Um, but basically, what we did um, in terms of using this formula, what I could have done is I could have plugged in the circumference of pi d, but then I had to, but then I would have needed to have realized that I need to also know the time over which it covers one circumference, okay? If you wanted to do it that way. In other words, what I would have done was this speed is equal to pi multiplied by the distance, uh, the diameter, excuse me, of 28 inches. But then remember, uh, this point is covering this one circumference once out of 180 times, yes? So in other words then, and that's per minute, so then this time down here at the bottom would have been one out of every 180 minutes. And when I do that, it's inches per minute. And when I calculate this now in the calculator, what I get is I get pi. So you can go to second pi times then 28 divided by then parentheses, one divided by 180. And what do we get? Oh my goodness, the same answer, right? And as you can now clearly see that this speed now is going to be 15,833 six inches per minute and that's kind of what I meant over here now I didn't show the I didn't show the units that I think well over here um, that's why you might say well wait a minute now I'm really confused um, you know this value here this is the amount of inches you know per rotation so that's always kind of the actually uh, actually actually that's always the assumption there when you calculate circumference okay the units really are going to be uh, so for circumference it's really 87.96 inches per one revolution. But then what's happening is you're going to take the 87.96 inches per revolution and you're going to then multiply it by revolutions per minute. And that was 180 revolutions every single minute. Now notice what happens to the revolutions. They go bye-bye. Right. So what are you left with? Inches per minute. And that's exactly what I did over here when I did this multiplication. You see how it's the same, but you see how the units worked out to be inches per minute? That's kind of what I was mentioning over there, which is the same thing as this, which I could probably give you another way to solve the problem. All right, there's many ways to slice an onion. Don't even know if that's a saying, but it sounds good. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hopefully this helps. And uh, if this one confused you, I apologize. Take care.